Right, we're going to have a go at making a placemat. Uh, so what I've got is 100% cotton, which is going to be my pattern fabric. And if you remember a few videos ago, I said I got these from a charity shop. They're actually white linen napkins, brand new, 100% white linen, cotton. Um, so the measurements are, and oh, before I go on about the measurements, underneath, I haven't got no cotton batting big enough and I didn't want to piece it so I'm using fleece so if you've got any fleece that's just as good just a bit of padding I didn't want to use polyester but you can use a lightweight polyester if you wish so that's the backing fabric the top fabric and the batting or the wadding of your choice and the measurements are for what I'm doing is the top is 12 by 14 inches so my white linen is 12 by 14 inches. My bottom, because I want these to come round to the front, uh, I've measured how much I want to over, which is inch and a half. So double that because uh, you have to fold it in on itself. I measure that as 20 by 18 inches. So that's 12 to 14 inches, 12 times 14 inches for my top. 20 times 18 inches for my bottom but first before we start putting anything together we have to quilt this I'm not going to do free motion quilting I'm going to put my walking foot on and we're going to do some wavy lines When you've finished quilting your centre, then you need to put it on top of the wrong side of your bottom bit, which is however many inches you want to show over this side. So if you want an inch over this way, then you need to do it two inches so you can fold it in and then tuck it over. If you want half an inch, then it's an inch. If you want an inch, then it's two. If you want an inch and a half, then it's three. So whatever you want to show over on your top, you double it so that when you iron it inside, then when you go like that, you've got whatever you wish on the top. Centre it all the way around, take a little bit of time, and then pin. Lots and lots and lots of pins to make sure it doesn't move again. If you use the flat headed pins because you need to put a ruler on top of them. So I've got lots of pins in there, nothing's going to move. Make sure it's as flat and as smooth as possible at the bottom. And the next thing we do is we have to cut these corners. So let's try and get it as close as possible to show you what I'm doing. You've got a quarter of an inch. got a quarter of an inch on the edge of your ruler what you need to do is put that 45 degree angle on the edge of your top making sure that you've got your quarter of an inch measurement still there So, 45 degree angle all the way down one edge, bring down your quarter of an inch that's on the tip, making sure your quarter of an inch is still there, and your 45 degree angle, and then you cut across the top. There you go. Do that 
on all four corners. So let's show you once more. 45 degree angle on the edge. Making sure that the tip of the quarter of an inch is on that corner. And keep moving until you've got both where you wish them to be, 45 degree angle and the quarter of an inch showing and then cut straight across. So we're now on the ironing table and what we need to do now is turn over and press. Turn all the edges into, fold them over into the edge and press. Turn round, fold over into the edge and press. And keep doing that until all four sides are turned and pressed. Right, the next thing we need to do is this is how you've just ended up with all your corn, with all your edges turned in and pressed to the centre. And you need to turn it over. Making sure it's all flat at the back. So, pick, always do corresponding sides. Never go from one corner to another. Do corresponding sides and you've already creased it so you know exactly where your edges are. Put your edges and your corners together and there's what you've just cut before to grow up by degree angle and pin. And pin. If it helps, pin it on that edge as well. Turn to the next two corners. Pull it together. So that corner is together there and your straight lines are together. There's your 45 degree angle. And pin. And pin. And continue to your next two corners. Pull together. Make sure that your corners are together there and your straight lines are together. There's your 45 degree angle and pin. If it helps, pin it further along here. And pin. So we've got one more corner to do. Put your corners together. Put your straight edges together and make sure the tips that you cut to are there. So you've got a 45 degree angle and pin. Pin further down here so it makes your life easy when you do the sewing machine. There you go and put another one in there. So basically when you turn this the other way round it will be like a boat shape with everything sticking up but that's going to make life difficult as you can see now we need to take it to the sewing machine so what we need to do now is sew a quarter of an inch down that 45 degree angle change from your walking foot to a 
quarter of an inch but I think I've got the right measurement make sure you go back and forward and that's what it should look like so that when you turn it over you've got a perfect 45 degree angle but we'll have a look at that in a moment let's just get the others done so when you've finished sewing and then you this is the back end and you sewed from the reverse and you turn it the other way then you can make sure all your corners are pushed out and all your corners are all pushed try not to uh, go through and make a hole make sure they're really neat and tidy you've got them out as far as you can get them if not if you have problems you can always cut at an angle to, to reduce the bulk and then obviously then when you put it round to the front it should come over at the sides where you wish it to be now remember when I said it might have moved a bit and I'm not going to worry about the edges because they're going to be covered so you've got some leeway there so what we need to do now is and you've got some ni really nice 45 degree angle joins what we need to do is press it would be better if it's pressed so it's pressed press flat no, it will stay better than when we're sewing it so start at the side make sure it's as far over as you wish it to be and then press down sitting right in the corners and everywhere you want And back to the sewing machine. What I've decided to do is zigzag going right on. So, once she's pinned and clipped, what do we wish to do? do a straight stitch, you can do a fancy stitch, you can do a blind hem stitch. Uh, if you want to do use one of the squares you cut off, fold it in half and practice. to do that all the way around well as you can see that's my finished uh, placemat and I've pressed it and when I turn over you can actually see where the zigzag has made a square section so it's actually reversible you can have it that side one day and another day that side and if they get messy just throw them into the wash now you'd think we'd finish by now but no we're going to go a step further and this is what I wanted to do. I put the other day I was doing something and I showed you how to I put my eyelets in and I put an eyelet on each corner and I threaded some cord. Now I could go up and down, up and down, up and down all the way around, 
which would be another way of doing it and when you turn over you've got your cord on that side and you've obviously only got one knot in the corner so whatever you choose to do whatever pattern you could have stopped before you did this there's nothing wrong with the way it was before um, it's just something different it's just for another piece of decoration um, it might have been better if I'd gone up and down up and down and used a thinner cord it's all about experimenting it's all about doing what you think's right for you this is for me this place mat it's not a gift or anything and there you go thank you for joining me please don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button thank you